Welcome to Sir Wayne's Accounting Lectures. Today, magkakaroon tayo ng pen and paper video problem solving patungkol sa Lecture 01, Investment in Equity Securities. Actually, nasa description ng video lecture na ito yung mismong problem under discussion. Kung gusto mong sagutan ng solo at balikan ng lecture na ito kapag tapos ka na, mas mabuti. Kasi ang accounting ay natututunan not by mere listening but by you doing the problem solving. Pero kung may sagot ka na nga, simulan na natin. So again, Lecture 01, Investment in Equity Securities. And here is our problem. Sun Company had the following transactions for long-term investment in an uncoated equity securities. So we have here five transactions. So the requirement is prepare journal entries to record the transaction. So gagawin natin, sasagutan natin siyang isa-isa. Dito muna tayo sa transaction number one. Purchase 4,000 ordinary shares of Moon Company par 100 at 125 pesos per share. Transaction cost incurred related to this acquisition is 75,000. Okay? Gawin na lang natin. Una, anong account title ang gagamitin natin? Napansin dito sa problem that the equity in instrument is uncoated. Meaning, hindi talaga siya traded sa stock market. Therefore, we can simply use the account title Investment in Shares. I mean, Investment in Shares or Ordinary Shares. Okay? Gawin na po natin yung number one. So, we debit Investment in Ordinary Shares. At lagyan na din natin ang designation kasi marami tayong businesses mamaya na paglalagyan ng ating investment. In this case, si Moon. So, therefore, Investment in Ordinary Shares Moon Company And we credit cash How much? Ang sabi dyan, bumili tayo ng 4,000 ordinary shares ni Moon Sa halagang 125 pesos So we multiply by 125 So therefore, 500,000 talaga ang ating investment Pero sa topic na ito, kung sakaling merong transaction cost Related to acquisition, that is capitalizable cost Therefore, we will add 75,000 to 500,000 investment cost that's why the total investment amount is 575,000. Okay? So again, we debit investment in ordinary shares, Moon Company, and we credit cash for 575,000. That is the entry kapag kasimpli lamang po ang investment transaction, basta bumili ka lang ng shares. Okay? That's it. Now, let's go on to transaction number 2. Ang sabi dito, purchase 7,500 ordinary shares of Jupiter Company. Par 100 pesos, market price of 150. The acquisition is through an exchange of Sun Company's office equipment with a fair market value of 1.2 million. The carrying amount of office equipment in Sun's book is 800,000. Accumulated depreciation is recorded at 250,000. So anong ating napansin? Ang way naman of acquisition is not through cash purchase, but rather through an exchange. If that is the case, kailangan maalala natin yung rule kapag ang acquisition na exchange. We have three priorities. Okay? So, meron po tayong hierarchy. Ano? The first one is, we will use the fair market value of the asset given up. In this case, the fair value of the asset given up, the fair value of the office equipment is 1.2 million. Yun yung gagamitin natin sa valuation. If ever hindi siya given, we will use the fair market value of the asset received. In this case, the asset received is in the ordinary share of Jupiter. Ang market price is 150. Pero since given nga ang fair market value ng ating ibinibigay na office equipment, baliwala na sa atin itong 150 pesos. And the last priority is the carrying amount of the asset given up. So given din dito ang carrying amount ng office equipment, wherein hindi na rin natin siya gagamitin kasi nga third priority pa siya. So again and again, okay? Ang gagamitin natin is yung fair market value ng asset given up. In this case, 1.2 million. That's why we are going to debit investment. Okay? Debit investment in ordinary shares. Okay? For Jupiter Company, using its the fair market value of the office equipment amounting to 1 million 200,000. And we are going to credit the office equipment na nga. So, credit office equipment. Nga lamang, sinabi rin sa problem na merong accumulated depreciation account. So, therefore, i-debit natin yung accumulated depreciation. Dash office equipment. Okay? 
So magkano yan? Okay. Ang sabi dito, ang accumulated depreciation ay recorded at 250,000. Ayan. So di ba yung accumulated depreciation, yun yung minaminus natin dun sa cost ng equipment para ma-determine yung kanyang carrying amount. In short, yung 800,000, nabawasan ito ng 250,000. That's why we have to add it back 250,000 para malaman yung cost talaga ng office equipment amounting to 1 million. 50,000. Pero hindi pa yan balanse, di ba? Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na gain. Gain on exchange. Okay? How are we going to do that? Simple lang. Kung ano yung fair market value ng given up, okay? Minus yung kanyang carrying am, ah, sorry, yung kanyang ah, tama, carrying amount, 800,000, we will get the gain or loss. In this case, may gain na 400,000. To double check, dapat balanse yan. Subukan natin kumpara ang debit sa credit. 1.2 million plus 250,000 Okay, 1 million 450,000 I-minus natin yung 1 million 50,000 At yung 400,000 So what can we see? Okay, balance siya So again, meron pong gain on exchange Kasi yung acquisition mo ay exchange transaction Merong derecognition ng asset Diba na derecognize si office equipment That's why gain or loss may arise I believe that is answer to number 2 Let's move on to number 3 Yan ang sabi naman dito, purchase 10,000 ordinary shares and 5,000 preference shares of Saturn Company for a lump sum price of 500,000. The market price, Saturn ordinary and preference share are 40 and 55 per share respectively. So what have we observed? Bumili tayo ng two kinds of share. We have ordinary share and preference share at a lump sum price, at a basket price. Ngayon, paano ang entry natin doon? So malamang dahil dalawa ang binili, We debit investment in ordinary shares. This time, tayo ay na kay Saturn naman, so Saturn Company, and then we debit investment again, kasi dalawa ang binibili in preference share. Hindi pwedeng pagsamahin sa isang account title, kasi nga yung isa ay ordinary, yung isa ay preference, magkaiba sila ng nature. Okay? And then we credit cash Kasi binili mo siya At alam sa price So ang cash na ibinayad mo Ay 500,000 So ngayon Anong problema natin? Ang problema natin How do we value Yung debit? Yung paghahati Ni Saturn Na ordinary At saka preference Given naman dito Yung kanika nilang market value Ang tanong ay Balance kaya ito Doon sa total price Na 500,000 Kasi kung magbabalance yan Therefore walang problema Kung ano lumabas yun na E eh, paano kung hindi? Kasi minsan kapag ka bumibili ka ng lump sum price, mas mura mong nakukuha kasi dalawa ang binili mo sa isang presyo. Anong gagawin natin doon? We have to allocate the lump sum price at their fair market value. In order to do that, we have to create a table. So gawin na lang natin. So we have here the ordinary share and then the preference share. Preference share. Kailangan natin ma-determine yung kanya-kanyang market price or market value. Okay, so itotal natin 'yan, ano? So we have here ang sabi ang binibili mo na ordinary share ay 10,000. At ang kanyang solo na market price is 40, so 10,000 times 40, we will get 400,000. At sa preference share naman, bumili ka ng 5,000 shares at 55. So therefore 275,000. 275,000 So what, we have, what have we observed? So pag inad yung 400,000 at 275,000 We will get 675,000 Hindi siya balance sa total lump sum price na 500,000 Therefore, anong gagawin? We have to develop a fraction to allocate That is 400 over 675 para kay ordinary at 275 over 675 Para naman kay preference Para malaman natin yung kanya-kanyang allocation Ang ina-allocate natin again is yung 500,000 dito sa entry Okay? So gawin na lang natin So 500,000 times 400 over 675 Ayan na, mamaya ulitin na lang natin Dito muna tayo 400 divided by 675 Yan yung fraction para kay ordinary share At ito ang imumultiply natin sa 400,000 So we will get 237,037 At doon naman kay preference 275 divided by 675 Kaya allocate natin yung 
3,000. So we will get 203,000. O parang mali tayo ng ginawa. Ulitin natin. 400 divided by 675. Ita times again sa 500,000. Double check ko lang. Okay, mali nga ang aking naisulat. Yan, pasensya na po. So we allocate to 96,000. 296.25 At pagdating naman Doon kay preference share So same procedure 275 Divided by 675 We have to multiply to 500,000 Okay kasi nga Diba siya yun naman yung ina-allocate natin Amounting to 203,000 Okay 703 Ayan 0.70 75 siguro yan So i-add nga natin To, do, to determine kung tama 296 296.25 plus 203,000 703.75 we will get 500,000 so what have we observed again and again okay we try to allocate narito pala yung sagutin natin okay we have to allocate okay using the fair market value of their individual share at ang base natin na nga ay yung kanyang lump sum price so again It will be our entry Debit, investment, and ordinary share Medyo pangit lang po yung ating sulat Pero imagine nyo na lang Kung wari yun yung nandun So ordinary share 296,296.25 Investment and preference share 203,703.75 And we are going to credit cash For 500,000 That's how we do entry Kung sakaling lump sum Ang ating pagbili Now let's move on to Transaction number 4 Ang sabi dito Purchase 12,000 ordinary shares and 8,000 preference shares of Moon Company for a lump sum price of 2 million. The market price of Saturn ordinary share is 120 pesos per share while the preference share has no known market value. Paano kung sakaling ganito bumili ka at a lump sum price pero isa lang ang merong given na market value? What is the rule? Una, bibigyan mo yung yung share na merong given market value At kung sakaling doon sa kabila Doon sa isa na wala Wala kang choice Yung remainder yung kanya No need to create a table for allocation Okay? Para mas maintindihan Gawin na lang natin So again, dalawang investment ang binibili mo So we debit Investment in ordinary shares Okay? Kanino nga yan? Kay Moon Moon Company And we debit Investment in preference share Also, kay Moon Company yan Dalawa ang binibili mo sa halagang 2 million okay? Pero isang, isa lang ang ibinayad mo Lump sum price And that is a total amount of 2 million So masasagutan na agad natin yung cash So we credit cash for 2 million Now, anong gagawin natin? Okay? Given na yung number of shares ni ordinary ay 12,000 at a market price okay, of 120 So therefore, 12,000 times 120 We will get 1,440,000 Yan na po ang debit natin Doon kay ordinary share ni Moon Ay mapano yung kay preference? Wala nga siyang known market value So therefore, yung 2 million Ima-minus natin doon sa nakwenta natin kaninang 1,440,000 So whatever is the difference That will go to the Investment in preference share for Moon 560,000 Okay? Sana maliwanag po kapag alam sa price Kapag given pares yung market value We develop a table At kung sakaling isa lang yung given Balancing figure Or yung remainder Para dun sa nawawalang market price Okay? That ends number 4 Okay? Tapusin na natin yung problem Let's answer number 5 Sold 6,000 ordinary shares of Moon Company for 220 pesos per share O sa case naman na to, hindi na tayo bumibili But rather, this time tayo nagbebenta That's why we will receive a cash So we debit cash Okay, ilang shares ang ating binenta? 6,000 Magkano isa? 220 So therefore, simply 6,000 times 220 That will be the cash that we are going to receive What? 1,320,000 Ano ang credit natin? Malamang we are going to credit investment in ordinary shares okay? Ordinary shares ni Moon Ayan, Ordinary share talaga yon ni Moon Company okay? Ang tanong, paano natin lalagyan ng value? Kung naalala nyo dun sa ating transaction number 1 okay? Bumili tayo ng Moon Company shares 4,000 shares Pero ang binibenta natin dun sa transaction number 5 hindi ba't 6,000 shares? Ay, paano yun? 
kulang yung binili mo na 4,000 dun sa number 1 Hindi ba't kung naaalala nyo rin Dito sa katatapos sa transaction Number 4 Bumili ulit tayo ng 12,000 Ordinary share ni Moon So in short Sobra-sobra pa naman talaga ang ating share Kasi nung una bumili tayo ng 4,000 Okay, kita ba? Bumili tayo ng 4,000 Tapos bumili ulit tayo ng 12,000 So ang totoo 16,000 ang shares na hawak natin 4,000 plus 12,000 Pero ang binibenta natin ilan lang? 6,000 So therefore, napakadami pa ng sobra natin E ang tanong, paano gagawin kung sakali na halimbawa Magkaiba ng panahon yung pagkakabili ng share diba? Iba dito sa number 1, iba dito sa number 4 At magkaiba ng presyo, anong gagawin? Okay? You have to use the cost ano, uh, I mean yung, yung cost uh, allocation Pwedeng FIFO o kaya ay average method Nung cost valuation, I mean Okay, so maalin sa dalawa So kapag ka FIFO, ang ginagawa Yung unang binili, yun yung unang binibenta Kaya kasi ka first in, first out Kung sakali namang weighted average Okay, kukunin mo yung average price Nung dating binili at saka nung bagong binili Tapos kukunin mo na nga yung average At yun yung gagamitin mo na cost Nung binibenta mo na shares Okay, ay paano ito kung sakaling yung problem ay silent Okay, you have to assume You will use PIPO method Okay? Gawin na lang natin para magkaintindihan Hindi ba't nung una ang binili mong shares ay 4,000? At alam mo na ang kanyang cost Sabi dito ay 125 Pero may transaction cost na 75,000 Okay? Kita ba? So yan So therefore, ang total cost ng investment mo 575,000 So again, yung 4,000 shares ay merong 575,000 na investment cost ay kulang ka pa ng 2,000 shares So sa madaling salita, kukunin mo naman siya Doon sa last transaction mo dito sa number 4 Kung saan yung pagkakabili mo ng 12,000 share Ay nagkakahalaga ng 120 Okay? So da, saan nga galing yung 2,000 na, remaining, na remainder? Kasi nga 6,000 yung binibenta mo So 2,000 yung balance yung figure So yung 2,000, ang pagkakakos niyan Ang pagkakabili mo ay 120 Therefore yan yung puhunan mo doon sa remaining na 2,000 shares 240,000 At ia-add mo yan Doon sa original mong binili Yung kaunahan na 575,000 So what does it mean? 815,000 talaga Ang lumalabas na puhunan Nung 6,000 shares At yun yung gagamitin natin Na credit doon sa investment In ordinary shares Moon Company 815,000 Yan yung credit ano pang napansin natin? Hindi balance yung transaksyon. Kasi sa case na to, dahil may the recognition of asset, kahit investment pa yan, pwede pong magkaroon niya ng gain. So we credit gain on sale of investment. ba? Diba? Okay? So how much is that? Just simply deduct the 815,000 to 1,220,000. So we will get a gain of 505,000. Balancing figure nga again yung gain. Okay? So I believe na sagutan na po natin lahat ng transaction dito sa different okay uh, examples or scenario kung sakaling yung problem ay equity securities na uncoated. Okay, so meaning hindi natin ginamit talaga yung changes in fair value, yung FBPL, FBOCI. Ito yung mga cases kung sakaling yung investment mo ay uh, not traded in the stock market or you just simply measure them generally at cost or uncoated nga yung ating mga investment. Okay? So sana ay meron ka natutunan, so yun lamang at maraming salamat.